All right. Here we are looking at our animation again, and it's time to animate it. Depending on what you're trying to achieve, you can change the timing of each one of these little blocks here, or frames, to something other than zero seconds. You'll notice that there is a thing called no delay and a thing called other, and then measurements of time from a tenth to a twentieth to half a second upward. I'm going to make these each 0.5, a half second. So I'm going to click down here at the bottom and select 0.5, click, select 0.5, click, select 0.5, and click and select for my final frame, other. And here I'll type three. Three seconds. One, two, three. Click OK. Now, you'll notice there's a play button, so I'm going to click on the first frame and play my animation. I know, that was exciting. <laughs> there is a, another few settings. The far left changes this back to the animation timeline mode, so I'm going to go back to the normal mode or the key, the uh, frame by frame mode. The second button here is the number of times your animation will loop. I'm going to put this on three. That's the standard. And play it again. So you can see how critical that, I know, it's cute, right? Um, you can see how critical that last three seconds is. And then it stops on the last frame, which is exactly what you would want it to do. Make sense? All right, so following that, there are a couple other settings here. This is the tweening method. You probably don't want to change this. We'll talk about this more next time, but you could actually make some changes to the parameters using this. I'm going to click Cancel. This is the new frame button. I showed you that already. And this is the trashing a frame button. So to finalize this, I need to export it. So I'm going to save it again. And I'm going to show you how to export this animation. And actually, you can see it play. If you put it right into a browser, you can watch it play. So, for your portfolio, if you're not going to have an online portfolio, if you're going to have a paper portfolio or a PDF portfolio, you would actually probably want to show each one of these as a separate image, stacking them, right? But to export this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do File, and I'm going to choose Export. And I have to say, I do like this Save for Web Legacy because what it does is it opens up this panel, which lets me see all the settings that I need to control and create my animation. First of all, this animation is 200.7K. That would be fairly large for an animation that you might be selling to or doing a freelance job to any companies like Web Pencil, they make animations like a lot of companies that make animations, hire people to make animations, they want their animations to be like 47k. This is more than double that. It's like five times or more. So I have to do something to make it smaller, which can be tricky, although truly they're is no need for 256 colors. Probably I can get away with something like 16 colors and not even see any change in the color. There's really not 215 colors in here, so that doesn't need to be 256. Now it's telling me 200K and I don't believe it. I don't think that that's right because I know I just changed it to something much lower. For the dither or great gradation between colors. I'm going to choose no dither. And there's nothing really shaded in my 
animation, you want to watch out for putting too much photographic content. Flat colors or simple artwork is best because you need to minimize the number of colors to make your animation play more quickly. There is no transparency, so I've checked that checkbox off also. This just does not seem to be refreshing the settings here because I know now this should be a lot smaller. When I export it, we'll have a better idea of what the it's going to do. It says no dither. On the bottom of the screen. Where's on the bottom of the screen. Where the GIF and the, it's on the left, right hand side. It's still showing all the same settings. Yes, that's what I just said. It's not refreshing. I don't know why. Original, optimized, now it refreshed. Now it's down to 112. Right here. So here it says zero dither now. It was just not refreshing. Can I make this smaller? That is the question. I probably should try. 16, ugh, 8 could be horrific. Not a good idea. All right, so I'm just going to leave it at 16. It's a portfolio piece. It'll be fine. Okay, those are the colors I have, 16. Simply put, you've got the original view, and you've got the optimized view, and for something like this, you can look at it two up so you could compare and contrast different settings or four up to con compare and contrast other settings. I'm going to go back to the optimized view which is showing me this at 16 colors. Uh, additionally, I can click through the frames. See what happens to the text? doesn't look as groovy. But we're just going to live with it because it's going to be five seconds long in the future in the life of people and while I probably should avoid some of these kinds of soft techniques I wanted to show you how to do them it's an animated banner it's not a painting in the Museum of Modern Art I know you want it to be awesome and beautiful and you will make it awesome and beautiful but I need to show you the pitfalls such as what happens if you get too fancy with your styles or color? You're going to need it to be minimal. can't show you that unless I do it wrong. Okay, I'm going to leave it just for this part of the um, explanation here. So now I'm ready to go. I'm going to put it back on one. And here where it says GIF, it should recognize that this is an animated GIF. In older versions of Photoshop, if you have an older version of Photoshop, you may need to set this setting to say animated GIF. If you're working on an older version at home, make sure this says animated GIF. If it is no choice for animated GIF, GIF is fine. And now I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it to my desktop as Banner 2 GIF. And it is now saved. All right. Now I'll toggle over to my desktop and I'll choose hide others. And I should see here my latest creation at the top of the stack, Banner to GIF. Okay. I will open a browser window, brand new one. <clears throat> And I'm going to take the animated GIF and I'm going to drag it and drop it out onto this window. Did that play three times? That seemed like two times to me. All right, so I'm going to drag it over again. You know, or not. I'll add a new window and I'll drag it across. Alright, so it's not refreshing. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop and check my setting, which I did have it three times. So I'm going to go to Other and just see what happens here if I type 4. OK. File. Export. Legacy. GIF. And save. And I'll call it 3. So I know that's the most recent version. Save. Toggle back over to the web. Hide others. Actually, I'll toggle to 
the finder, and now here's number three, and I'm dragging it and dropping it. One, two, three. Okay, so four means three. <laughs> I know, and then it crashed, which was kind of cute. Let's try that again. Let's close this one. <clears throat> it's not refreshing. Let's try it again. I'm going to press Shift R for refresh, return. All right. Let's try it again. Does not want to refresh. Doesn't seem like a good thing. Let's try that again. Close tabs, new tab, click and drag. Not a pretty thing. All right, so why is it doing that? Let's come back and take a look. When this is set to four, and this is frames, duplicate, everything looks okay. So it could be my browser. I'm going to make sure that I save it as banner. Oops, wrong, wrong and bad, no biscuit. File, export. Legacy. That was cool. All right, so here we've got preview. One. All right, two. Three. And if you want to make a little web page, you can just take this content and copy and paste it into a HTML page. It's essentially, playing three times and life is good. Okay. So I'm going to stop there with that. Okay. So that is how to create an animated banner in Photoshop.